Hello everybody and welcome to the next Let's Play Cave Story. This is the plus version so you're going to notice updated graphics and everything from the original version and all that. It's gonna be really fun. This is a game I've wanted to Let's Play for a very long time but I didn't want to start it until I got a little bit bigger on my channel because it's a game I care a lot about. It's pretty much the, what started a really big indie game scene. Because this was made in, I want to say, 2006 or something around there. So, it's kind of a big deal. Let me turn down my uh, mic audio. It's really loud. I uh, think that ought to do it. Yeah, it looks better. I don't want to be peeking the mic. Anyway, I'm going to be going over a couple things. Story mode, of course. There's a mystery mode here that we don't know about. So, maybe we'll see that. We have some challenges here, we'll go over them later after we beat the game. Game options, typical stuff, I... There is a way to make it widescreen, but it doesn't work very well with recording, so we're going to be going with the native sizes of the game. Got your volumes, got three different types of music, and I might switch between these in between episodes, because you can listen to the original music from uh, the freeware version of the game. You have new music, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of it. Gonna wait for it to pick up a little. Yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's okay, but I really like the remastered music better. It's more of a direct kind of, it's pretty much a direct remake of the older music. And then you have graphics, you can go to new or original. I'll stick with the new one because uh, I like them more and I'm used to it. That's what I first played the game on. So, uh, then there's quit, of course. Without further ado, let's get started. I have a couple of files here already. And, uh, you can choose the difficulty. Uh, easy is, well, for lack of a better term, easy. It's, it lowers the damage you take, raises the damage you do. Well, I guess it lowers the enemy's HP, stuff like that. Uh, original is just like the original game. Hard removes... A lot of the heart containers which raise your HP in the game so it, and of course you take more damage as well so it's not something I want to take on especially with the end of this game it gets kind of insane so we're gonna stick with the original I like how it changes the cancel thing on hard but there's those three and those also change uh, how your character looks I'm not gonna delay it anymore we've already spent three minutes here let's get started so, someone's transmission is coming through. Connecting to network. Logged on. Starting IM chat. Sue? Are you there? It's me. It's Kazuma. I was somehow able to escape, but I got lost. I'm in a shelter without anything inside. If you're reading this, please answer. Please? So we're going to get a couple of these while we play the game. Controls are pretty basic. You can move around, down checks what's behind you, up to look up and later to shoot upwards. And A to jump, B will be to shoot, and we'll go over uh, more things later. This will refill your HP and later it will, it will refill your ammo as well. And you use this to save, so we'll go ahead and save so we have the file there. So this is basically, if you don't know what Cave Story is, I want to say it's a Metroidvania game, but I don't actually know what that means. I'm assuming it means something like a mix between Metroid and Castlevania. Like leveling up with Castlevania and Metroid just in playstyle, which it kind of is. Uh, it's a 2D side-scrolling shooter. You pick this up, and it's a life capsule. This will increase your HP. It was previously 3. Now we have 6 HP, which is kind of important because those red spikes, if you touch them, do 5 HP of damage. So we're just going to keep moving on. We do not have a weapon yet, so that's what we're on our way to get. You can see all these different enemies floating around. When you're uh, underwater, you have an air meter. When it runs out, you start losing HP, so don't let that happen. And uh, let's go in here. So we have the Hermit Gunsmith. He's sleeping. And here, we will grab our first weapon. Open the treasure chest. We obtained the Polar Star. Now what you're going to see on screen is a um, screen. Uh, it's going to be a weapon bio. And I'll have listed what it does, uh, the three levels it can have, which we'll go over later, the amount of bullets it shoots every time you press the shoot button, uh, damage, and experience required to level it up. 
so we're going to be going over all of that later. <laughs> the Really, this weapon bio is just to show you uh, what it is. Uh, we're going to go over everything afterwards. The weapon bios in the future will be a little more useful once you know what they mean. So, there's that. Searching for Sue. One Sue found. This is this was made a while ago, by the way. So this is like I am chat or something. Sue, answer me. They're looking for you. Are you asleep or what? Your brother is so lonely. Oh no, not your brother. So, he's still asleep. But now, if we press the B button, we can shoot. And as you can see, we can shoot one bullet at a time. You can pretty much shoot it as fast as you can mash the button. Since it goes so short. But you can only have one bullet on screen at once, I want to say. And, uh, there's that. You can shoot down in the air. You can shoot up. Shoot in any direction you want. He just shoots in the direction that, uh, quote, which is our character, is looking. There's a lot of backstory to this game, by the way. And uh, I'll explain it as we go on through the game. So you can see the amount of damage you're doing. These are experience pellets. Once I get, I believe, 10 with this weapon, uh, we will go on to level 2, which will increase our damage, range, and the amount of bullets we can have on the screen. These are HP. If you're missing any HP, that will refill it, just to show it off. We took 5 damage. There it feels 2. And I think you can get, like, groups of hearts that they can drop, too. And that can help you off, help you out as well. I believe it'll do like 10 HP, which you get a lot of HP in this game. Oh, also, every time you take a hit, you lose your experience. Well, you lose some of the experience. So that's the biggest negative to lose to getting hit, because it can level you down pretty quickly if you're taking too much damage. And it's really important to keep your weapons leveled up for most of them. There is one that actually is the strongest when it's at level 1 and loses power when you level it up. And we'll see that near the end of the game, actually. So hopefully we can get up to level 2 before we leave this room. Do not touch that door because it is an enemy. With a lot of HP, actually. Just short. I think if I wouldn't have gotten hit, I would have had level 2. Come on, Sue. Type something, will you? St starving over here. I'm so hungry that that... I even ate a cockroach. Lol, just kidding. But just so you know, if I get to that point, I'll do it. Nice. That's Kazuma. Now we have the Mimica Village. Give me the key. No way. Are you trying to protect that Sue girl? She's an outsider. Sue is a good person. I won't betray Sue. Toriko, the next time that the doctor shows up, someone else will be taken away. If Sue isn't returned in... in if Sue isn't turned in... You could be in danger. But, but, just hand over the key. And we fall out of nowhere. And we knock him down after we fell. So that's cool. So we're in the Mimiga Village. This is kind of the hub world of the game for now. Uh, it changes like, it changes once, to be honest. So we can go around and explore here before I actually go anywhere. I want to talk to this guy, this dude. His name's King, I believe. What? You're not an enemy? I thought you were one of them. You were knocked out! My name is King. I'm the number one in this village. Though I say number one, it doesn't really mean much. There are only six of us left in the village. Well, really, including Sue, it's seven, but she's not one of us. She's just an outsider that came into our village. So, to get on a little bit of the, uh, of the backstory of this game, we're a robot. We actually came here... Uh, we were originally deployed here to uh, to destroy the Mimigas, I want to say. But that's not actually our purpose. It was the robots that were with us. That was their purpose. Obtain the Silver Locket. Our purpose is going to be revealed a bit later in the game. Because uh, it is not... It was not to destroy the Mimiga. The others were. So here's Sue again. Wah! Well, that's not Sue. That's Taroko. That's right. I want to talk to the fisherman over here. It's hard to, like, get over there. By the way, you move faster when the air, in the air. I believe it's like a 5% increase in speed, so if you want to go fast, jump a lot. Sue? Yeah, Sue. That cute girl who, who's always hiding inside Arthur's house? She recently came to the Mimiga village. She fell into the reservoir there. I don't think she's very fond of us. It seems she hates everyone in the village, but she's a Mimiga. Same as the rest of us. Well, to a point. There's an opening up there. We'll be going through there. Uh, later in the game. 
There's a lot of this. The world in this game connects really nicely. Hand over that key. No! And Taroko just knocks him out. He's not the toughest, it seems. Arr! Taroko! Don't underestimate me. Now, before we actually go where we're supposed to go, which is over to that hut right over there. I guess it's not really a hut. Uh, we're going to explore the Mimigo village a little more. There's another character here. Mm, gulp. Jeez, you scared me. Sue? Oh, you mean the girl staying at Arthur's house, right? She lives w together with Taroko. That girl's a real cutie. She must be looking for flying dragons. As all cuties do. Wonder if there really is such a thing. Dragons that fly in the sky. Uh, as opposed to dragons that don't fly, I guess. There's a couple more things we can check out here. There's actually a save point that I completely skipped over here. We're gonna get want to get this. You'll see a couple of these rooms throughout the game. It'll just lead to a room where you can save and heal. Not too much about that. Up is Yamashita Farm. Left is the reservoir, which is where we went to get the silver locket. Right is the cemetery, and down is Arthur's house. That was that house to the left. There's a cage here. Don't know what that'll be used for. We're going to go to y to the Yamashita farm, though, because there's actually one thing you get here and one thing only. Actually, I think there's something we get much, much, much later, but that's not. Sh I'm not sure about that. There's a life capsule here, and that's about it. There's also uh, one of the, what he said, seven Mimiga here. One that's not a real Mimiga, apparently. So let's talk about, talk to him. This is a farm where we grow flowers. My job is to protect this farm. To us, Mimiga, these flowers are a pre precious source of food. But not the red flowers. I heard that if we eat red flowers, our blood pressure skyrockets and we'll die in an instant. Fortunately, on this farm, we don't grow, grow those vile red flowers. Yeah, I'd hope you wouldn't. We're still at level 1. Did we take another hit sometime? Because our HP is a little lower than I remember it being. Or our, uh, our experience. Let's pass up path up there we can't really go the graveyards over in this direction not really anything we can do there yet but there's one more thing we need to get there's a map right over here and you'll want to grab this as soon as you can because this is the only spot you can get it something's written as so as long as you so as long as you huh that doesn't sound right always maintain a sense of exploration you will someday find the way out this is my hope so now if we press the select button, you can see a tiny little map there. And the reason it's so small is because later on in the game, there's much larger areas and it's going to fill the majority of the screen. Uh, you can see that little blip in the top left of the screen. That's where we actually fell out of. That's where the first cave is. And that's literally what it's called. It's called First Cave, which is kind of funny. Now that we have all that... Oh, also, you can show your inventory here. Right now we have the silver locket and the map system. So after all that, let's go in this door and see what we, ha what we have. You jerk! And she'll attack you. Not the toughest enemy we've faced. Wah! Oh, help me, help me! Uh... You're not the doctor? Oh, sorry about that. The doctor's such a cruel and evil person. He shows up in the village and kids kidnaps Mimiga. At times, even killing someone. The doctor, he killed my other bro older brother. Ah! That pendant! You picked it up for me? Sue gave it to me. But I don't want it anymore. King gets bent out of shape when Sue and I get along. Please keep it. Uh-oh. Oh yeah! Kool-Aid man in an inn! I found you! It's no use hiding from me. I've got a nose of a clever harrier. Indeed. Another new kid. We're just getting so many new characters. I didn't realize how fast they throw them at you. Yes, he has a nose and the brain of a dog. Misery! I found her first. You too, you're with the doctor. You must be Sue. The great doctor has summoned you. Come along with me. Huh? But I'm not Sue. Oh, they took Taroko. Balrog. The rest is up to you. So this dude's Balrog. I'm the wrong person! I told you. Not this again. I always have to clean up after her. And I'm the one who found her, not Misery. So what's up? You want to fight me with... That little pea shooter? You can literally select yes or no if you want to fight the boss or not. The first boss of the game. So it's kind of crazy. Um, I think we will say yes. Also, fun fact, if you choose easy mode, the pea shooter is actually what your first weapon is called, so that's funny. 
I'm turning down the gain a little more because I'm peaking the mic a lot, so I'm going to have to turn that up later. So let's fight this first boss. Understood. And then he just fights you, just like that. He has a lot of HP. We should be able to take him to... That was close. If I had the level 2 weapon, I would be doing 2 damage with each shot, so that would have been nice to have. I think he jumps like every 3 times he goes. Luckily, we took him out without end taking any damage, so we should be able to level up off of this. I remember this. Defeated Balrog. So we'll be seeing him later a lot. He's, uh, I believe the creator actually described him as a soap, as a piece of soap slash a lunchbox. So that's interesting. So now it looks like we're shooting two little projectiles here. I think we can have two on the screen at a time. It has a little longer range and it'll do two damage instead of one. So we are pretty set on that account. So, uh, Balrog and, uh, what was her name? Misery are with the doctor and are apparently all bad guys. So now we've done that. Uh, we got to tell the only other Mimiga we haven't talked to in the town assembly hall uh, about it which is kind of weird but Mimiga Cemetery currently closed due to hazards what did you say Taroko's been kidnapped that's terrible we have to inform King yeah previously he would just would have just been like yeah you can't go into the graveyard my dude I wonder what they're talking about in here I actually never have gone in here to check yo what's up not Taroko too Taroko's other older brother Arthur was a strongest warrior but he was killed by the doctor himself I wasn't even able to protect Taroko. Ugh. Oh. There are two keys to Arthur's house. Taroko has one of them. The other is inside Mimiga Cemetery. Well, you can see what we're getting. Keep in mind this, uh, this fireplace for later. There's something on the other side. Yeah, that's kind of important, so you're gonna want to remember that fireplace for a little bit later in the game. To be honest, I think the beginning of the game is my least favorite part because it's kind of slow paced you only have one weapon we do get tons more in the future there's this guy though oh i'm shooting the ground yeah if you can mash fast enough you can do a ton of damage so now we need 20 experience to uh get on to level three which will be our final level but then you can actually get some more experience look at that face you can get some more experience to make sure like if you take a hit you don't immediately level down to level two so that's important Arthur's grave. Something is written on the headstone. Here rests the true Mimiga hero, Arthur. And we got Arthur's key. Not much is said about Arthur throughout the game. This is pretty much one of the last mentions you'll get of him other than going into his house and using everything that he has. Because he's dead, and he can't tell you not to, I guess. Anyway, I think I'm going to end it off there. In the next episode, we will use Arthur's key to go inside Arthur's house. So I'll see you all then, and goodbye.